I got a Wooting 60 HE. How did I get it? <laughs> anyway, let's open it up and take a look at the super cool Lecker analog switches that are in this guy. Wooting makes some pretty good stuff, but they're mostly known for using analog switches and for having basically the fastest keyboard you're gonna try, or one of the fastest at the very least. There's basically zero latency, sub one millisecond is what they like to say. Uh, how do I open this from either side? This is Sammy's, so I wanna be a little careful. I don't wanna break any packaging, <laughs> but let's take a look at what we get in the box itself. We have got our keyboard. It says take control and the cool wrist strap. I've actually seen these before. And then we've got this little greetings from Wooting that I. I, I'm gonna open, I'm sorry, Sammy. I'll try so hard not to not to ruin anything for you. I've got a little greeting card, that's super cute. It's a really minor thing, but you know, it just it's just cute. When you buy it and you open it up, it makes you feel just a little, a little nice about your purchase. But I'll try to put that back for Sammy since it's got nothing else in there. We've got a quick start guide that you can use a QR code to access. Well, that's pretty handy. As much as I don't like to gate things with phones, yeah, it's just, you know, it's less, less, uh, less, environmental destruction. Speaking of which, we've got a plastic little protector here. What just fell? Oh, cardboard. What else do we have? We've got a couple of extra switches in here. So our Wooting 60HE is hot swappable. So if you need to swap any of those out, you can do it while it's hot, no problem. I'm guessing this is a part of the wrist rest to attach it. A little rubber piece here with some screws. And then what else do we have? I don't know what these screws are for. Probably part of the keyboard. That's actually kind of nice. You know, you don't usually strip them when you're taking it apart and putting it back together, but it can happen. So yeah, I'm actually really impressed that they sent it with extra screws. Goodbye box. Now it comes with two extra lecker switches. These lecker switches are basically like a normal switch, except for instead of any leaves or pins, it's just a Hall effect sensor. What that does though, is it lets them be analog. You can move it a little bit forward if your character just wants to walk, but you could also do full tilt forward if you want to run. So you can do that with your keyboard now. These were actually in the last wooden keyboard we checked out, the 2HE. I don't think our firmware was working very well. And so we're gonna give it a much better shot this time. The nice thing about the 60HE is that it is obviously a 60% keyboard, so it is much smaller. That kind of layout and size is also just a lot more popular right now. People realize that not a lot of them actually need their F row as long as they have a function key. And a good chunk of people don't need a numpad, or at least not an attached one. If you do feel like you buy a smaller keyboard, like a TKL, 60%, 65%, whatever, at any point, you can buy a separate numpad, plug it in, you should be good to go if you need that like for bank statements or Excel entries or anything like that. The nice thing about this though, is that it's just tiny. It's tiny, 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 and we get that big gamer feel from it. I will be frank. I don't know why they have a wrist strap. There's a lot of things I do get about this keyboard that are actually really cool and great. And the wrist strap kind of looks neat. I guess at the end of the day, you can just choose to not install it if that's what you prefer. But you know, it's it's the whole experience. We wanna, we wanna get this whole thing. Yeah, it's for that hardcore gamer feel. And then we just screw it together. And then boom, you've got a wrist strap. You making sure I do it right? Cause it's your keyboard? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Bye Sammy. It's like a Wiimote. Yeah, it's like a Wiimote. While we're looking at the back though, I'm gonna check out what it says here, as well as the feet. They're not adjustable, so you're not gonna get one, two, three stage feet or anything like that, but they've got four rubber pads here and uh, you know, it should do just fine. Uh, it's not the heftiest keyboard, it's about 605 grams, but the reality is with something like this that you want small and a wrist strap to keep it ready to go, you kind of want it to be a little light. It's a plastic shell. There is a steel plate in here. So if you want to change that out, feel free. That's kind of the nice thing about the Wooting 60HE is that because it's a 60%, there are a ton of 60% cases that you can just pop it in something else. It'll probably sound and look a lot nicer. Not that they've done a bad job. I actually kind of like the little Wooting Crown logo. Um, one nice thing that I didn't really point out is on the back, it says, we made the Wooting 60HE for you. Please take good care of her. Oh, that's really cute. I'm not gonna try to read those because they're all hand script and I can't read it. But yeah, it looks good. And if you like the black and yellow aesthetic, then you know what? Hey, this is maybe the keyboard for you. For example, this is a 65, so it won't quite fit, but we just built the Tofu 65 2.0 for a different video. Think of the power and capability of a keyboard like this in a nice solid aluminum case like this. Oh my God, I bet you it's just fantastic. And you can do that if you want to. We're not gonna do it today, but it's really nice having that option. 
You know, just initial impressions, it looks and sounds pretty decent. We're gonna do a little more thorough type and test and game on it, but not before a word from our sponsor, Corsair. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring today's video. Their Xenion Flex is a 45 inch OLED monitor that bends to your needs. No, literally, it seamlessly bends from a flat ultra wide monitor to an 800R curve. Plus with its 1000 nit peak brightness and a matte non-reflective display, you can stay fully immersed in games, movies, and even the most thrilling of spreadsheets. It has burn-in protection and a three-year warranty, so you can rest assured that Corsair has your back. To add a little flexibility to your life, check out Corsair Xenion Flex in the description below. Probably the best feature, at least in my opinion, is the fact that their utility software is called Wootility, which is just an absolutely splendid name. You can do a lot with it. You can change the RGB, you can change the brightness, you can change the actuation points on all the switches. You can customize it to whatever you want. Do you want your switches to actuate once you hit basically almost nothing, like 0.1 millimeter? Normally it's your mouse, but you never know. Maybe it's some weird game and you've got to just mash a key. You can do that so that as soon as you let off the press, it's ready to go again. You don't have to release the key all the way for it to register that it's ready to go. So you can go just stay right on the bottom there and just smash it as fast as you can. Luckily, you know, button mashing is uh, no longer as much of a thing in games. Now the QTEs are kind of dead, but they still come up every now and then. Now, as for this keyboard, is it even detected? Yep, okay. Now what I really need to know is how is this profile working? Digital profile, analog profile. So what if I change the brightness now? There's a save to keyboard, but it's grayed out. Like it definitely changes. Like as soon as I change something, find device here. Let me find devices. Yes, 60HE, connect. Okay, on Utility Web, you have to give permission. That's fine. Device found, update, sure. Uh, While well, this is updating, as you could see before, there is definitely RGB on the keyboard. And that's really nice because while the keycaps are ABS, they're nice shine through ABS. So it's really easy to see the RGB right through them. That's kind of, a, it's a surprising sticking point for a lot of people. They ask me, you know, how do I get keycaps where I can see them with the RGB? It's like, I want to see the letters and the legend lit up. And yeah, it's just shine through keycaps. They're not that hard to find. It's just sometimes harder to find a really nice quality set. Yeah, it just says you need to give permissions to the bootloader called Wooting Restore. And I click the give permission button and then it's like, it wants to connect to the device, wooding restore, paired. I say, okay, connect. Maybe I have to hit continue again? We were trying it with the web utility and it didn't work very well, but once we downloaded the proper app, set it up, updated all the firmware and all that, it seems good to go now. If I go back from performance to color and I change the brightness, off means off, half means half, and full means full. Jelly, what's jelly like? Oh, that's cool, it's like ripple, but a little different, that's sweet. I, you know, I'm not crazy about this. I would probably just leave it on like no effects and keep it on just plain RGB, or I'd set it to a primary color. We're just gonna set it to wave. <laughs> and then performance mode though, this is super cool. Here's where we've got our Lecker switch, and then you can set the per key actuation. So if you only want like your W for moving forward to actuate at the very top, you can set it to just W, which is super cool. Left click on the keys to select them, or while holding down left click, select multiple keys. Move the actuation slider to give them custom actuation points. And then rapid trigger dynamically actuates and resets your keys based on your intention to press or release the key. It starts and ends after the actuation point. Tachyon mode optimizes your keyboard for input speed. When enabled, every key pass responds as fast as possible. The RGB effects are disabled. Analog stability might be affected. Okay, well, I don't want to affect analog stability, but let's say you don't want to set actuation points. You just want basically one of the fastest keyboards on the market so that you can't blame your equipment anymore when you die. You can only blame yourself. You miss that shot. It's not because the keyboard or the mouse sucks. One nice thing too is it comes with a bunch of different profiles. It comes set up with just typing, rapid racing, and mix movement. I don't understand why mix movement is a thing, but sure. I'm just gonna stick with typing profile because it seems pretty typical across the board at 0.8 millimeter actuation force. The cool thing too is that this thing comes with eight megabytes of onboard memory. So you can save all of these profiles to the keyboard. So if you take it and you go somewhere else, it's all still set up exactly the way you like it. This thing does come stock with a bunch of Poron and EPDM foam layers and it doesn't sound bad. The space bar and some of the stabilizers could use a little bit of work, but it's not awful by any means. And I don't think that you like actually 
need to update them yourself. I think that if you wanna just buy this and leave it stock, that is perfectly acceptable and it's going to be, you know, surprisingly impressive to a lot of people. Many of you, if you're not used to a 60 or 65% keyboard, for anything that's not on the board that's missing, you can hit this function key and it basically acts as an extra layer of key presses. So for instance, I don't have an F5 to refresh, I'm gonna hit function five and that works as F5, basically. Let's go. One hundred four ninety six percent. It's not my fastest. It's actually definitely one of the slower tests I've done. And you know what? While a lot of you are going to buy this specifically for the analog switches, one thing to remember, even though this is a hot swap board, you can't just pop in tactiles if you like tactiles. The Lecker switchers are linear. That's kind of on purpose so that you can have all of that play in the actuation force and like the analog movement that you wanna experience is only really gonna be available properly at least in, an, in a linear switch. If you like linears, that's great. But if you're really into tactiles or clickies, this thing honestly might not be for you. That's kind of a really big deal for a lot of people. But for gamers, everyone seems to love really light linear switches to have that instant kind of response. I'm really into tactiles right now, so it's not so great for me, as is evidenced by this typing test. But that's not why you're buying the board. You're not buying the board for that. So let's play some games. And look at that, I'm going like eight kilometer, eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour, whatever. And then I press it all the way and rinse, or like pedal to the metal. Oh man, and for like, it's such a big deal for a racing games without a controller. When you're pressing keys instead of using a thumbstick, a lot of the time pressing down A or D to turn left or right, you're going to like do a full turn or a full turn, you know? So you're just like tapping it a lot of the time to try to get that really like smooth curve in a racing game. Whereas with this, you actually have the full capability to just, you know, just, just turn, just turn a little bit. You'd have to play with the actuation points quite a bit to get it exactly where you want it. But with the turns, it's definitely a lot more difficult to just tap it a little bit while you're playing. But yeah, it's honestly working and it's honestly like really, really cool. I don't think I've ever wanted a feature more in keyboards just all the time. I don't know how much I'd actually use it personally uh, when it comes to racing games or fighting games or what else do I use a controller for? That's pretty much it. Anything involving shooting, I'm basically keyboard and mouse. Well, it definitely works. The RGB looks good. It feels and sounds pretty decent, especially for you know a keyboard that's more of a, a gaming centric keyboard. At $175 though, while it might not be the keyboard for me, it can definitely be the keyboard for you, especially when you're comparing it to more other like gaming brands like Corsair or Logitech. Honestly, I would buy the Wooting every time if those are your options. There are plenty of other options if you want a really nice and fancy quote unquote mechanical keyboard, but the reality is if you want analog switches, this is one of your only options, if not the only option. So yes, I'm gonna say that I would totally buy the Wooting 60HE if it's kind of what you're looking for. I think it's not a bad buy and uh, go for it. It's a pretty cool keyboard. Thanks for watching, this is Short Circuit. If you wanna watch another Short Circuit about keyboards, we did the Keyboom recently. That thing was really cool. It was clear, see-through. Pretty similar price too.